All right, response video to the Meyer Mystic uh, regarding the Larry Summers video, which um, there's yeah, no point in trying to qualify it. Not brilliant stuff. I don't know how seriously you take it. I mean, you know, you prefaced it with, okay, he's a bit of a, and he's a bit of a, but sometimes he says something interesting. Okay, maybe. I don't know. I don't think he said anything interesting this time. Um, so it was a rather tedious listen, actually. Um, so I guess the fundamental point I'll make is that, you know, I don't think government's borrowing money makes any sense whatsoever. Um, I don't think it does, uh, paying interest, any interest, is bad. Um, setting yourself up to spend a lot of interest payments, if interest rates ever went up, the federal government couldn't pay the financing charges on the debt it's issuing um, and it has to reissue so um, yeah it's very dangerous and destructive socially awful I mean this pretense that in the last 30 years we've gotten away with it and therefore it's okay or 40 years um, 30 something huge increases in um, government debt um, it's just uh, welfare to the rich, essentially, in perpetuity, and uh, doesn't make any sense if we can avoid it, and it doesn't make any sense even on a, even on a capitalist, from a capitalist point of view, in the sense that it's still consuming investment, and it just doesn't matter whether you s just take the money from the rich person and spend it on the necessary government service, or you... Um, borrow the money from the rich person, you're still taking the money out of the investment pool and um, by borrowing it you take the money out of the investment pool forever essentially. A big huge giant pile of money. Um, again, leverage changes that because people leverage the bonds into more equity and uh, spend the money twice so to speak. Um, but in principle, we, we know this isn't, that's no way to run a railroad. And borrowing is bad, okay? Um, um, it's better to tax and spend than borrow and spend. So if that was the simplest question, what's better, uh, tax and spend or borrow and spend, I would argue that logically it's better to tax and spend than borrow and spend. Simple answer. Um, did he say anything else in his video about uh, any other solution? So I don't think he's got the problem. So so let's just say, if we, if we were going to sit here and say, look, what are the problems that exist? And what are the solutions? So we can have those two um, sides to the equation. And um, I mean, I, obviously I would argue that the problem is, is that we're put all the incentive carrots in front of one in 1,000 horses. Um, they're wasting them, squandering them, stepping on them, stomping on them. They're just fucking the game all to pieces. They not only waste money and work and resources of the civilization through their squandering of it, personal jets and frivolous crap. Um, they're not smart investors. <laughs> they, they invest in in shams and crooks or crookeries and ripoffs. Um, small print everywhere. Um, you know, all kinds of catch-22s. Yeah, it's very profitable to fool stupid people. Even that argument I could make, it's like the YouTube argument. Um, everything migrates to the lowest common denominator because they're the easiest to steal from. And they're, these are basically greedy criminals and they have a bunch of ignorant, stupid people to steal from and so that's where all their activity is concentrated. So they don't help civilization any. They just exploit stupid people and then somebody has to clean up the mess. And that's not even talking about the mess of all the bankruptcies and all the waste of their competition, all the empty warehouses, all the redundant infrastructure. Um, I attempted to make, a, uh, just to break into this argument with um, you know, a thing that you use a lot um, because of the uh, the energy, peak energy problem, 
and the solar energy scenario and, and then the fact that we are implementing solar energy in this despicably horribly inefficient manner um, that's only because of greed it's only because we, we won't sit there and do it the rational way that the state could save the citizens of the state huge amounts of money if the state would just build the solar farm even though it can't compete with oil, but let's just build it anyway um, and sell the citizens shares in the solar farm. Let the citizens own the solar farm if they choose to. So instead of putting the panels on their roof, they could own this, the solar farm, they could get the energy out of it, the more energy than they're getting off the panels on their roof for certain, at less expense and less liability to their home. So they get the best of what they have now. They get everything they have now, which is ownership of their own energy, um, with much more secure and functional infrastructure. And all that all this takes is what? Saying, let's not let stupid, conniving, weaselly, rich people make decisions for our civilization. And instead, let's be a little bit rational. I, uh, you know... I mean, what other context or what other way can we argue this you either let selfish greedy people decide and do it wrong or we somehow find some mechanism to allow smart people to advise us on how to design a good game I mean that's all this is again this is you know I'm gonna write the word game down this is all this is is a game and the game is productivity and efficiency. Productivity in your work and efficiency in your consumption. Is there some other thing that we're really after here? And, and you're not going to get that by letting a bunch of greedy people loose to create back doors and, and, and connives and cheats to let nepotism and bigotries run the game. We can't. I mean, I'm just saying. There's no rational conversation. If that's as limited as your your view can be, then yes. And if the only decision is going to be is whether we should borrow money or tax money, okay. Then I'm just going to. Say, I'm voting for taxing. Yes, it makes more sense to tax and spend than borrow and spend. And if that's the limitation of the conversation, then fine. That's my opinion. I think that's where the the facts um, point. So I think Larry Summers is a douchebag. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, what else is there to say? Um, insufficiency of demand is directly <laughs> related to too much wealth in the hands of too few. Yeah, they don't. They have too much money. They can't spend it rationally. They can only spend it irrationally. And so, um, yeah, we don't have any rational demand. Um, yeah, the truth is, if these numbers are correct and and we, they could be even worse than what the numbers reveal. Obviously, these rich people probably lie about how much money they really have. Um, but yeah, you're talking about a, you know, 10% of the people owning 90% of the world. And if you, and if you just start bending that that num those numbers a little bit, um, you're talking about a threefold increase. Okay, you inconvenience one in a thousand people the horrid inconvenience of living on a million dollars instead of a billion dollars um, the horrible inconvenience of just being a mere millionaire instead of a billionaire so you, you impose that horrible inconvenience and <clears throat> the lifestyle of the average working person increases by 300 percent three times as much income yeah you'll have more spending then you won't have a problem with demand then, would you? They have three times the disposable income. Yeah, I think there's going to be plenty of fucking demand then. Um, okay, again, his solution is borrow more money from rich people. Uh, more interest payments. Pay more rent. Paying rent is good. I mean, I knew as a, you know, as soon as I heard what rent was, I knew rent can't be a good idea. I mean, I obviously never thought about being a renter. I mean, it just automatically sounds like you're a scumbag. So, so I mean, 
what, what, again, there's no human beings who don't want to live in a scumocracy. No, nobody can just say, no, I just want a fair deal. I just want a fair shot. Everybody has to be in on some racket, some free lunch. Bullshit. Fuck. Um, so anyway. Um, Alright, so there was some talk of austerity, whether it's good or bad. Um, I don't think you need austerity balanced budgets. So again, you know, again, they're just too afraid to touch the rich because all of a sudden the rich are gods. Everybody's everybody's in love with rich people. Everybody thinks rich people are actually do create jobs. They don't steal jobs. They don't steal resources. No, they create all this stuff. They make it out of nothing. They don't make it out of your labor. They don't make it out of the value of your labor. No, they make it out of their magic brain power that adds so much value to our lives. I mean, if Bill Gates couldn't have, didn't figure out how to rent an operating system to IBM, holy shit, we would never, we couldn't, we couldn't, I mean, it's like landing on the moon. I mean, he gave us such a magical and wonderful world. Rent. Fuck. You know, not standards. Proprietary uh, little gimmicks. Yeah, what, where would we be with Apple's, without Apple's $50 50 cent cord, you know, with its proprietary connectors. So, yeah, you pay $50 for something that costs 50 fucking cents for no other reason than because you're stupid and you're suckers and you're assholes and you'll let a company do that to you and say it's okay. Fuck me, it's okay. Sell me a printer that's really just an ink cartridge that I'm going to have to replace in six months. Yeah, it's okay. I don't mind being fucked. I don't mind sitting there wanting to print a document and trying to figure out why I can only print 13 documents out of this ink cartridge. Because they're selling me fucking ink at $100 a mega ounce, uh, a minute ounce. Yeah, live in that world and tell me it's great. Everything's just fucking fine. I hate it. I despise it. This world is revolting and disgusting. You don't even live in it, you fucker. <laughs> and so you know, you've, you've moved out of it. And then you talk about it. it's a wonderful system and it's all working just fine. It absolutely smells like goddamn deer repellent. <sighs> all right. Pay more rent to the rich. Yep. I mean, that's all it all leads to, right? There's, there's nothing here, right? There's no notes to take because the guy basically just said, yeah, let's just borrow more money, borrow more money, borrow more money, borrow more money. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Let's have a zillion. Let's have a zillion, bazillion debt. Yeah, because it's okay right now because interest rates are only 1%. But when they go back up to being 7%, uh, yeah, so, well, so what? You only have to tax people for 10 years to pay for the interest payments on one year's of the budget. <sighs> anyway. All right, so the only interesting question that might have been came out of this thing, it was a, a little bit of conversation about what technology means to the value of labor. And and I'd say the more interesting question is, is, is how disposable is a human life? How useless have we become? And obviously, we're only useful to the rich as long as we'll click on their ads, okay, buy into their trickery, be fooled, be suckered, lease our car to save money. Um, you know, if we fall for their gimmicks and their ripoffs so they can make huge profits, all right, so they can sell us something for $50 that's only worth $0.50, cents, um, but that's the, that's the game that's being played on us, right? And if we don't play that game, we have no value. You have no value to the rich unless you're willing to play that game or you're willing to build that game for them. So if you're willing to go to work and engineer a computer program or some other thing, you know, that randomly calls people's houses and, you know, puts names next to phone numbers and can figure out who lives where and do this blah, 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 blah. And then have a little computer voice say, Hey, Gary, I want to suck your dick. You're so fucking cool. Will you buy one of my things? Or whatever the bullshit is. So, yeah, go ahead. 
Yeah, so if you can do that, if you can contribute to the rich man's willingness to fuck your neighbor, okay, their desire to screw your poor neighbor, or the sucker who likes to gamble, or the sports nut, or the, uh, gotta have my Nike little slashy thingy, um, you know, if you're willing to help, you know, um, pile it on to the stupid and extract as much out of them as you possibly can, engineer ways to get the employees to, you know, work an extra 10 hours a week, uh, you know, for $4 extra pay, yeah, then you have value to that, to the, to the world. But unless you want to be part of that racket, you have no value. Okay, you might as well be dead to them. You are dead to them. They will not culturally feed you with knowledge or information. They will not feed you, period, food. They will give you nothing if they can't extract huge profits out of you. If you're unwilling to have your pockets picked, they do not, they, you can be, you might as well be dead. Um, if you're not willing to pay three times more, then you should for your existence. The rich man doesn't want to know you exist. Um, so it's yes, it's technology is is making us obsolete in a lot of ways, <clears throat> and certainly the rich can can certainly it's, there's to a point where they don't need too many of us to keep them comfortable. Okay, just a few to make the machines, and then the machines can do all the servicing for them. Um, because they can afford it, uh, you know, they can afford a, a, a seven million dollar computer. Um, so I'm just, I'm just saying that's the the reality here, is that we're making human lives disposable. Because the only thing that has value is servicing the rich. There isn't anything else to do but make rich people happy because they have all the fucking money. Alright. Uh, magic trick. Yeah, so, so I was saying a metaphor for this whole thing is that, you know, this whole conversation in a way, is that there's the economy, these these economists and this, this whole capitalist infrastructure, this whole system is like a, a magician doing a trick. And we're sitting there saying, well, let's dissect it and see how they're doing this trick. And so we're having an argument about whether the guy's really pulling doves out of his sleeve or whether he has them, you know, they're really shooting out of his pants pocket and then he has a hole in the elbow and they're, you know, or whatever the gimmick is. Um, but that's all we're doing. We're all, we're all sitting there looking at the clank, clank, bang, bang. It's making all these noises, doing all this stuff, and we're trying to figure out if there's anything in this Rube Goldberg noise machine that has any value whatsoever. And what I'm going to say is it has no value. It hasn't been constructed by intelligence. It's been constructed by greed and theft and connivory and thieves. It's been constructed by fucking thieves. Nepotistic, elitist, cheater thieves. Um, and it shouldn't make any sense to a decent human being. Um, yeah. Uh... And I, I'm saying that this is not that complicated. Um, we can design this monopoly game, okay? It's, monopoly is not a very good metaphor for an economic system. Um, and I think we can, though, if we thought about constructing a game, how do you make a game um, where you create the right incentives? And some things are very, <clears throat> very difficult, right? I mean, I could just bring up the problem of the poor and their sluttery behavior, um, you know, having kids is, and then using the kid to extort us, right? I mean, homeless men die all the time, and nobody gives a fuck, right? But you can't let a kid die on the street. You can't let a kid starve to death. You can just let some homeless drunk, well, who cares? Nobody. Um, but kids, we don't let them die um, stupidly or unnecessarily or brutally if we can help it and so we're extorted we're we're they they use they they hold the gun of mistreatment to the head of the child and say pay me welfare or i'll hurt the kid and that's the game being played here um even bankruptcy has some of that rolled into it like we're all supposed to be terribly empathetic 
for some asshole who lived way beyond his means, <laughs> okay, um, you know, uh, doing some entrepreneurially crap. Yeah, right, right. He did most of his entrepreneuring, you know, in the south of France, probably, you know, somewhere around where you were hanging out, uh, drinking wine and shit, um, not doing serious business, and he goes bankrupt and we all got to pay for it. Um, in the sense that it becomes the cost of doing business is that some of your um, customers are going to fuck you um, on credit. And, and that, so I would extend that argument to this argument about these different levels of good and bad digits. Um, I personally don't want digits associated with people doing bullshit and run bullshit. Um, and we know people will be seduced by that. We know people will be seduced by the, the short run interest. You know, something that works for two years and then blows up. And they'll just say, wow, I get 15% I get return on my money. Okay, it's a pyramid scheme and it won't work two years from now. So what? Well, the so what is, is all those bankruptcies and all that failure is still going to get paid for by somebody. Again, there is no, there's no free failure in the world. There's no free lunch, and there's no free failure. It all costs. It all has to come out of, there's only one thing of any value here, and again, we're back to, you You know, you don't believe it, but the only thing of value on this fucking planet is the mind and body of a worker. The, the aptitude, their capacity to take things in the world and make them better, to make them into something somebody else can consume, and gain comfort from. And that's the reality. And that's who's getting ripped off. Um, to maintain a fucking idiotic system of fraud and fakery and connivery and nonsense. So fuck these asshole economic jackasses defending this bullshit system. Um, as if we can't do anything about it. I mean, the Larry Summers guys couldn't even say, well, why don't we put taxes back where they were at least in, like, <laughs> 1985, even. You know, the first round of tax cuts. Um, you know, but we should put them back where they were in 1971 when Forbes talks about a gold standard. Well, why don't we just have the tax rates of those days and see how much better things become. Um, so anyway... Yeah, there's nothing else to talk about. Is there, is there any other subject in his video besides should we borrow money or should we tax? Should we tax and spend or should we borrow and spend? Not that complicated. I say we should tax and spend. I'd say it's the only rational choice. Borrowing and spending is stupid. Counter-argument? Okay, until next time.